Welcome to the reading of the Spirits book. We are talking about the introduction. Um, this is part nine. So we've read from uh, one uh, through eight in the previous um, videos. And Kardec pretty much explains the definitions, the methodology. Um, he made a, f a full summary of Spiritism in, in part six. Then he went on to talk about morality and the science and also the study you know that the spiritism is something that we study now from now onwards we're just going to touch pieces of it I will not read into detail because it's more about um, all the questioning and um, the contradictions that came up against spiritism that he tries to address one by one so being a logical man he goes and takes uh, each one of the, those things. So he talks about uh, charlatanism. Um, if that could happen, he says, of course, and the only way that we, that it, that we could um, is, is by investigation, right? So he talks about that, but us usually charlatans don't work for free. And because we're not trying to make money out of these things, it's very unlikely that you won't. Um, then he also poses the, the, the fact that spiritism has grabbed the attention of serious individuals. So it cannot be bad uh, if, or, or these serious individuals won't be, you know, ha have a, a real interest in it. Then there was the challenge on 10 if um, spiritism could be the work of the devil. He said, then he goes and, and he, um, you know, analyzes and says, spirits are not equal. Um, but if they can be good and bad, why would only the bad ones communicate, right? There must be um, equality on that. Then he talks about the names of the spirits, if they're only renowned spirits communicate. That was one of the criticisms that they, 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 had, that they had heard. And he says, that's not true, that all sorts of spirits communicate, but the renowned ones um, are the ones that get the most attention. Um, then he talks about how to recognize um, different spirits, right? So, of course, any spirit can say that he was somebody famous, somebody important. And then he says, look, um, we need to use deduction. You need to pay attention to the language. Um, and then he goes on, um, same thing on handwriting. Um, and... Here, he, he kind of sums up like all these different things that could go wrong and he says, we cannot repeat too often that spiritism demands constant and prolonged study. And that since we cannot produce spirit phenomena at will, we must wait for them to occur on their own frequently when we least expect it. For attentive and patient observers, the facts are abundant, for they can discover thousands of characteristics, nuances that appear to them like rays of light. The same applies to every other branch of science, while the superficial observer sees in a flower only an elegant form, the botanist, botanist discovers these treasures for thought. So, again, he keeps encouraging um, you know, evaluation, um, deduction, studying. And here on 13, he will talk about the different languages that spirits use. Then he talks about that could be spelling errors and autographics. Of course, this is a communication, so it's prone to error. And he even talks about madness in, <laughs> in, in um, this is part 15 that he says, um, all great intellectual pursuits may cause madness. So madness is, is an, an occurrence that uh, can happen in all sciences and arts and even religious have also applied their contingencies. Insanity has an organic predisposition of the brain as its primary cause. And he says, I therefore state that spiritism is not specially privileged in that respect and uh, something that can happen uh, anywhere. Um, then he goes on about the objections, uh, a couple more objections, and he says here, two objections still remain on, on uh, this is number 16. 
two objections still remain to be examined, the only ones that really deserve to be called objections because they are supported by rational theories. Both accepted the reality of the material and mental phenomena, but they denied the intervention of the spirit. So these are for the people that actually validate that um, the tables were dancing, that the communication was happening, but they challenge if spirits were um, creating them. And he says, there's one is about magnetism. That's just a magnetic effect. And the other one, it's about the mediums themselves are creating the messages. Um, and then he starts asking, where did the spirit theory come from then? Is this, is this theory dreamed up by a few individuals in order to explain the phenomena? How could they have given such precise logical and sublime information regarding the nature of superhuman intelligence. So where would that have come from if it's um, only somebody who's, who's creating that opinion? And he says here um, that spiritism is not a human concept at all. So that cannot be created by the mediums. It was revealed by the manifesting intelligences themselves when no one had even imagined it and when general opinion was opposed to it. And he also is, is exploring if that could be an opinion of a person that carried forward and just everybody sharing that opinion. But he said if this, the first medium who appeared in France was influenced by the opinions of those who had already been accepted in America, by what strange impulse did, the, did he go in search of ideas 3,000 miles across the ocean and among people whose habits and language were foreign to him instead of taking what was immediately around him? So it was very difficult if it was an opinion based of one person to be um, spread around so quickly across all of that. So that is kind of so Kardec spent some time here in the introduction we're not reading uh, all in detail about you know the objections and again he welcomes all of those arguments and he uses logic to say would this be true and and he goes one by one on part 17 he goes back to study and he goes back into you know studying and he, he calls here the spiritist science consists of two aspects. The experimental that deals with the manifestations in general and the philosophical that deals with intelligent manifestations. So he talks about the spiritist science here being two things, you know, the, the, the actual practical uh, where the spirits will communicate and the philosophical one. Most of us are, are interested in, in the philosophical. So we, we look into study groups and, and all of those things because it's for the purpose of self-development, not necessarily looking for spirits, um, uh, you know, or any manifestation. He goes on to say, the true spiritist doctrine is found in the teachings imparted by the spirits and the knowledge of this teaching is far too serious to be acquired in any other way than an in-depth and continuous study made in silence and reflection on the matter. So again, he talks about, you know, continuous study. Only under such conditions can one examine the infinite number of facts and nuances which have escaped many superficial observers and have consequently led them to form their own opinions. If this book had no other purpose than to show the serious aspect of the subject and to induce the study of it, that would be sufficient and we would be happy to have been chosen to carry out a work for which we ourselves do not intend to gain any personal merit. So he removes himself from the work. Is just serving as an instrument. He doesn't see himself as deserving of any merit on it. And if it is this only instills the 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 desire to study, he's already happy with the with the result. Its principles are not of our own creation. 
the merit goes entirely to the spirits who have dictated them. It's an important point because Kardec was very clear in saying he didn't invent anything, he didn't found anything, he didn't start anything. It's, he said he only takes credit for the methodology and for what he calls codified, he creates the, the method, right, in the work. But he says, it's not my knowledge, I was just asking the questions. You know, spirits have existed ever since. Communications with spirits have have happened ever since. I have only studied and put it in a form that would be available to all. That's another thing that we want to talk about that is important to, to, to explain about Kardec. At that time, there were very intelligent, educated people who were interested in those kind of, you know, things and communications and all those things and the studies. Kardec was encouraged by some to not make something for the masses, said, you know, these people, they're not going to understand anything, why bother with them? And, and he was very firm into writing a book that anybody could read. He didn't write for scientists, for philosophers, for a specific group of people. He wrote a book that would be simple enough, organized in a question and answer form. He was very detailed in explaining his methodology, his approach. So anybody who would have the interest would be able to um, make use of that, of that knowledge and that study. And here he goes on to say, we hope that it will produce a further result, that of guiding those who desire to learn, showing them as they study the grand and sublime objective of individual and social progress and pointing out to them the road to follow for its accomplishment. We will conclude with a final consideration. In their probing of outer space, astronomers discovered among the scattered celestial bodies unexplainable vacant spots that did not seem to abide by the laws of the whole. They therefore speculated that such vacant spots were occupied by bodies that had escaped previous observation. In addition, they observed certain effects, the cause of which was unknown, unknown to them, and they said to themselves, there must be a world where there, because such a gap should not exist and because such effects must have a cause. Then, by guiding the cause, by, by judging the cause by the effects, they were able to calculate the orbital elements, and later the facts appear proving their predictions. Let us apply this same reasoning to another order of ideas. If we were to observe the series of living beings in nature, we would realize they form an un unending chain of continuity from raw matter up to the most intelligent human beings. But between human beings and God, the Alpha and Omega of all things, what a huge gap there appears to be. Would it be reasonable to suppose that humans are the final link to this chain? That they transcend without transition the distance that separates them from the infinite? Reason tells us that there must be other links between humans and God just as reason told those astronomers that amongst the worlds they already knew about, there had to be others. What other philosophy has filled this huge gap? Spiritism shows that it's filled with beings of all categories in the, in the invisible world, and that those beings are none others than spirits of humans in the different degrees leading to perfection. Thus, everything is linked together. Everything forms a chain from the Alpha to the Omega. You, who deny the existence of spirits, go ahead and try to fill the gap they occupy. You, who laugh at them, go ahead and dare to laugh at the works of God and the Divine Omnipotence. Alan Kardec. 
So this completes the reading of the introduction of the Spirits book. Um, in the next video we'll talk a little bit about Kardec and we'll go into starting with question number one of the Spirits book. So we get into the reading. Thank you for being with us. See you next time.